All right. Hey, I'm Stephen Fletcher. My dot com is WebFletch. My daughter said that. She's like, what's your dot com? So now I say, what's your dot com? My dot com is WebFletch. Uh, it's about dot net garbage collection and when do I implement iDisposable. So um, in this talk, I talk about how .NET garbage collection works, um, when cleanup occurs for .NET garbage collection, and when to implement iDisposable. So when do I implement iDisposable? You don't implement iDisposable. All right, my name is Stephen Fletcher, and <laughs> there we go. All right, seriously. Um, so what we just learned is, if, if you have never heard of iDisposable before, then you're probably in a pretty good place. If you have not heard of iDisposable, or if you have heard of iDisposable before, then um, what you want to learn is pretty much not to use it. Uh, there are some very serious, some very side edge cases when you can use it, but uh, they're pretty rare. And um, if you don't use it, you're less likely to get in trouble and have bottlenecks and slowdowns. Um, it could slow you down depending on how you implement it. So how does garbage collection work? Well, it runs in a background process with each .NET framework that you have installed. So if you have .NET 3, 3.5, 4, and all these different frameworks, then they each have their own garbage collection. Actually, a different version of garbage collection. They get better and better. Um, it cleans, mem cleans memory that you put on the heap. So uh, if you have an integer, garbage collection doesn't have anything to do with that because that's stored in the stack. But if you have, uh, you say, like var customer equals new customer, then the customer instantiation will go on the heap and uh, .NET garbage collection will watch that and manage it. Um, the lowercase c customer that you assigned it to actually goes on the stack as a pointer and will point to the heap. And the way .NET garbage collection actually works is that instantiated customer that you created, the object you created, um, it will watch that and it will watch the stack and it'll say, how many pointers do we have pointing to this object, customer object? So it'll put the, uh, the customer instantiation in generation zero is what it's called. And it will actually, um, every time garbage collection works, it'll check generation zero and it'll say, are there any pointers to it? Um, if there's not, then it'll go ahead and clean it. If it checks a couple times and it says, there are a lot of, um, there's been a couple times that I've checked you and there's, uh, there's always been pointers to you, it promotes it to generation one. And it just checks generation one less frequently. So what it'll do is it'll uh, go through the stack, it'll check, it'll go through the stack check and eventually also promote it to generation two. There are three total generations in uh, .NET garbage collection. Um, once it finds that there are, there's no more uh, references to it, then it'll mark it ready for cleanup. And once it's ready for cleanup, then it'll go ahead and clean that up. Um, yeah, there's only two times that I can tell you for sure that the garbage collection works, actually runs, that actually collects. Uh, one time when your application closes and it actually checks all of the generations, generation zero, one, and two. Uh, make sure it cleans everything up. And also when generation zero fills up, generation zero is actually pretty small. So it'll, you, whenever you instantiate something, it gets more and more and more in there. And then when it gets filled, it'll either clean them up or push them up, up to uh, generation one. Um, those are the only two times that it for sure went, uh, runs. So what is iDisposable? Has anyone here not heard of iDisposable before? Okay. Um, iDisposable is just an interface and has a dispose method on it. There's nothing special about it except that the .NET framework looks for classes with iDisposable so that you can use them with a using statement. And a using statement is really just a try finally, which helps you to instantiate your disposable object, whatever that may be. And in the finally, it makes sure that it calls .dispose. So those two examples, those two images are exact, exactly the same thing. One of them is just a using statement. One of them is a uh, try finally. Uh, how is iDisposable related to garbage collector? It's not, there's, there's no relation to it. When the garbage collector runs, um, it does not call your dispose method. Um, there's no tying to it at all. That's sort of a misconception that I've heard a few times. Um, you either call your dispose method manually on objects that you implement iDisposable on, um, or in the using block, which is also manually, because if you're creating a using block, then you're doing it hopefully knowing that it's calling the dot dispose method. Uh, let's skip that for time. Um, so use iDisposable for DLL import. Um, the thing about iDisposable is that you should not use it for cleaning up a class that has like integers and strings in it. Uh, if you have a class with a bunch of properties that are like um, string book equals and then you literally fill it up to the maximum of string, um, string can get, you still don't implement iDisposable and set it to null. If you're implementing iDisposable and just to set objects to null, then what you're doing, and this is how it relates to the garbage collector, even though they're not, they're not connected, 
uh, what you're doing is telling the garbage collector, hey, at some point in the future, possibly in this dispose method that I've implemented, um, I'm going to be using this variable. Um, and so, and so the, the, any of the scope ending cleanup that .NET Framework does, or garbage collector, or anything like that, will say, hey, there's still some references to it somewhere in the future, let's not clean it up. So instead of being smarter than the .NET Framework and the uh, garbage collector and setting variables to null whenever you think you're done with them, what you should do is just leave them alone. And, uh, and whenever all those references are actually done, the .NET Framework or the garbage collector will clean them up for you. Otherwise, you're just telling it, hey, hold on, I'm gonna do something with this later, which you're doing nothing. And also, by the way, whenever you set string to null, you're not actually getting rid of, it, getting rid of anything because strings are immutable. Uh, that string value still stays there in memory until something comes along and clean it, cleans it up, um, and you're just putting it off for longer, so. Um, so seriously, never use I disposable. Um, every tool's there for a reason, but I'd use GoTo and Reflection more than I use I disposable. Uh, I've, I've heard some other options, people saying, you know, uh, I have a class that touches something with DLL imports, mouse pointers, or moving something around or doing something, and so I need to implement I disposable. Well, if you have methods that are uh, consuming DLL imports, maybe uh, get a connection to some piece of hardware or something in the OS, do something with it, and close the connection within the same method, you should never have to implement iDisposable on your class because you're not putting that into a property on the class. Um, so, yeah. Real conclusion. All right. I'm Stephen Fletcher, WebFletch, and um, grab me after if you have any questions or anything like that.